Hello and welcome to Byju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the daily quiz discussion for the 8th of June 2022. Before we begin, a small update on our knowledge series. Byju's Exam Prep IAS has been at the forefront of launching new initiatives for the civil services preparation. And as part of this, we are glad to announce the launch of the knowledge series. Under this series, important static topics would be taken up for discussion. Each of these sessions will have a comprehensive discussion of these static topics. Daily, there would be two live sessions, one at 10 a.m. and the other at 3 p.m. Tomorrow, that is the 9th of June, join us live at 10 a.m. for the geography topic, retreating monsoons, and at 3 p.m. for the history topic, causes of 1857 revolt. The knowledge series initiative with its emphasis on the static syllabus will complement our ongoing initiatives like the Hindu analysis, daily quiz and the big news which are current affairs oriented. This would help ensure a more holistic preparation for the civil services exam. Please note all of these initiatives are free. If you are liking our initiatives, please do like, share, comment and subscribe. Your appreciation in this regard will act as a great motivation for us to come up with more such useful initiatives. Beginning with the first question of the day, which reads, consider the following pairs of tribal revolts and the associated personalities. There are three pairs given here. Khasi uprising of 1830s, Tirod Singh, Khol uprising of 1830s, Budu Bhagat, Santal rebellion of 1850s, Sidhu Murmu. Which of the above pairs are correctly matched? Please have a look at the options. Now, what is the context? This article from the PIB notes the inauguration of the National Tribal Research Institute in New Delhi by the Honorable Union Minister for Home and Cooperation. Speaking at the event, the Union Minister announced the decision to celebrate the Adivasi Tribal Pride Day. He reminisced the contributions of tribal leaders and their bravery in the struggle against British imperialism. He spoke about the bravery exhibited by Veer Durgavati and Rani Kamlavati among others. Coming back to the question, the first pair is correctly matched. The Khasi uprisings of 1830s was a result of the Khasi's opposition to a road construction project through the Khasi Hills. When East India Company failed to yield to the demands of the Khasi people, the Khasis led by Tirod Singh attacked a British garrison. This marked the Beginning of the Khasi Uprising. Consider the second pair, the Coal Uprising. The Coal Uprising was a revolt of the Adivasi Coal people of the Chota Nagpur Plateau region. This was in reaction to the economic exploitation of the East India Company. The Coal Uprising was led by Buddhu Bhagat. The second pair is also correctly matched. Also note, Buddhu Bhagat was also the leader of the Lakra Rebellion of 1832. Moving on to the third tribal revolt, the Santal Rebellion, also known as the Santal Hul. This rebellion took place in the present day of Jharkhand. It was directed against the British East India Company as well as the Zamindari system. This was led by the Murmu brothers, which included Sidhu, Kanu, Chand and Bhairav. So the third pair is also correctly matched. Since the question asked for the correctly matched pairs, the answer to this question would be option C, all three pairs. Moving on to the second question, which reads, which of the following statements is or are correct with respect to surface level ozone pollutant? There are two question statements given here. The first one reads, ozone is a secondary pollutant. The second statement reads, as per the air quality standards notified by the environment ministry for ozone, the limits are 100 and 180 micrograms per meter cube respectively as 1 R and 8 R mean values. Please have a look at the options. What is the context? This article from today's the Indian Express notes the increasing ozone levels in the national capital region of Delhi. Coming back to the question, consider the first statement. Ozone is a secondary pollutant. This is correct. But what do we mean by secondary pollutants? Secondary pollutants are those which are not emitted directly from a source, rather they are formed in the atmosphere. So let us understand the formation of ozone. Ozone is formed by the chemical reaction between nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds. These react in the presence of sunlight to form ozone. Please note, 
NOx are emitted by industrial facilities, power plants as well as vehicular exhaust, whereas the major source for volatile organic compounds is the unburnt fuels. Please note, in the recently held UPSC 2022 Civil Services Prelims exam, there was a question based on the formation of ozone, wherein one of the question statements said ozone is formed under inclement weather conditions. What do we mean by inclement? It means wet or rainy. This is wrong because as discussed, the formation of ozone needs the presence of sunlight. Moving on to the second question statement. It is very difficult to remember and recollect such numbers with respect to different pollutants. However, a closer analysis of this question statement will reveal how such statements can be dealt with. It prescribes 100 and 180 for 1 hour and 8 hour mean values. Observe for shorter time frames, that is for 1 hour, you would have higher values and for longer 8 hour mean values, you would have lower. So, even though one would not be aware of the exact numbers, just by knowing this fact, you can come to the conclusion that the statement is wrong. Going by the National Ambient Air Quality Standards, the numbers are as follows. Note the values for 1 hour and 8 hour. Since the question asks for the correct statement, the answer to this question would be option A, one only. Moving on to the third question of the day, which reads, which of the following statements is or are correct with respect to e-waste in India. There are two question statements given here. The first one reads, India is the world's largest e-waste generator in the last two years. The second statement reads, more than 90% of the e-waste generated in India is collected and scientifically disposed. Please have a look at the options. Now let's understand the context. This article from the data point series in the Hindu notes the rising e-waste generation in India and expresses concern over the lack of scientific disposal. The article expresses concern that this could result in the contamination of the environment with hazardous metals, which can turn toxic to humans in the long term. This section of the article notes that a very minuscule percentage of the total e-waste generated in India is being collected. And this chart, based on the Global E-Waste Monitor report, notes India being the third largest e-waste generator behind China and the US. This table shows some of the hazardous metals contained in e-waste and how they can affect the human body. Please pause the video for a few seconds and go through this table. Coming back to the question, from our discussion it becomes clear that both of these statements are wrong. Why? India is not the world's largest but the third largest. Also, it is not more than 90%, it is around 10%. Since the question asks for the correct statements, the answer to this question would be option D, neither 1 nor 2. Moving on to the fourth question, which reads, which of the following are the powers enjoyed by the Rajya Sabha? There are three question statements given here. The first one reads, the authority to move a subject from the state list to the union list for a set amount of time. Statement 2 reads, recommending the creation of additional All India services. A third statement reads, when the Lok Sabha is dissolved, Rajya Sabha can declare an emergency under Article 352 for a limited time. Please have a look at the options. Now, what is the context? This article from today's The Indian Express in the backdrop of the upcoming biennial Rajya Sabha election discusses the election process as well as some of the special powers enjoyed by the Rajya Sabha. Coming back to the question, the first statement is correct. That is, the Rajya Sabha has the authority to move a subject from the state list to the union list for a set amount of time. This power flows from the article 249. As per the provisions of this article, Rajya Sabha can move a resolution with a majority of not less than two-third of members present and voting to move a subject from the state list to the union list. This remains for one year and this can be extended by one year at a time by a similar resolution. Now consider the second statement. This is also correct. That is, the Rajya Sabha does enjoy the power to recommend the creation of additional All India services. This power flows from Article 312. Moving on to the third statement. This is also correct. That is, Rajya Sabha can declare an emergency under 352 for a limited time frame when the Lok Sabha is dissolved. 
the correct answer to this question would be option D 1 2 and 3 moving on to the last question of the day this is a question from the UPSC 2019 GS paper 1 the question reads in the context of digital technologies for entertainment consider the following statements there are four statements given here the first one reads in augmented reality a simulated environment is created and the physical world is completely shut out the second statement reads in virtual reality images generated from a computer are projected onto real life objects or surroundings the third statement reads ar that is augmented reality allows individuals to be present in the world and improves the experience using the camera of smartphone or pc the last statement reads vr that is virtual reality closes the world and transposes an individual providing complete immersion experience this question asks for the correct statement please have a look at the options now before we get down to the discussion understand what is virtual reality virtual reality in very simple terms is a computer generated simulation of alternate world or reality in this case the real world is completely shut out whereas in the case of augmented reality images generated from a computer are projected onto real life objects or surroundings this improves the experience of the user from this discussion it becomes clear that statement 1 and 2 are wrong because they are interchanged statement 3 is correct whereas statement 4 is also correct since the question asks for the correct statement the answer to this question would be option b 3 and 4 moving on to the fact of the day environmental performance index what is the context this article from today's the indian express notes the release of the environmental performance index for the year 2022 india has been ranked 180th that is india stands last in these rankings note india was ranked 168th in 2020 in this context let us discuss a few important aspects related to environmental performance index this index was started in the year 2002 as environmental sustainability index this is brought out by the world economic forum in association with the yale center for environmental law and policy and the columbia university this index uses 40 performance indicators across 11 issue categories note the epi or the environmental performance index measures environmental health and sustainability of countries this is a biennial index that is it comes once in two years in the most recent epi index the top five countries include denmark uk finland malta and sweden while the bottom rung countries include pakistan bangladesh india note india has performed badly in these indicators indicators such as biodiversity air quality greenhouse gas emissions pm 2.5 and waste management an important observation made by this year's environmental performance index report is the interlinking between economic prosperity and environmental action the report notes that a higher gdp per capita is indicative of the capacity of a country to take strong environmental action this is all for today Thank you for being with us.